Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Flying Friday and our Douglas World Cruiser Around the World Recreation. We are here in Atka, Alaska. We are aboard a Flybee painted BAE 146. I didn't have anything but Flybee uh, Air France and British Airways. I just went with this one. So there you go. That's what we're going with. Let's, uh, let's check, let's see, not that. Uh, there's my flight plan, I need that over there. Uh, that's what I'm looking for, the overhead panel. All right, beacon on, nav on, strobe on, wings on. Uh, no smoking seat belts, that's a good idea. Let's turn on our oops, pedo tubes, because this is probably gonna be kind of, um, yeah. So let's uh, flip the landing lights on, turn on our logo lights. No, I don't need wipers. <laughs> Just makes fun. Turn on the wipers. Turn on all the things. No. Okay. Uh, ice. Yes. So is there... Am I missing the anti-icing somewhere? No. So what are you? You say you are that. Wait. Does this go away if I flip this? No. No, no. Ah, anti-ice. Duh. There. Okay. Ice system's on. We should be good. It is late in the day here in Alaska, which does mean the sun is setting. That does mean we need to get ourselves in the air and on our way. We do have 533 miles, which is uh, over 1,000 kilometers to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand on my uh, brakes here. We're going to give ourselves full power. She's quiet at full power. Let's just stand on him a little bit here. Let him run up. Yeah, she's not even, she's barely moving. She's like squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. All right, here we go. Go plane to the sky with you. If we get in the air. <laughs> We'll talk about other things. Where we're going, what's going on, all those kind of things. It looks like I can take off. Good. In the air with us. Vertical rate. Excellent. Gears are up. Let's get those flaps in. Let's slow the aircraft because otherwise we will have a serious overspeed problem. We are going to have a serious overspeed problem because this plane is just like insane. Here we go. All right, we're aiming for about 14,000 feet. Uh, a nice tight turn here to line ourselves up with our flight path. Our flight path? Yeah, our flight path to Chicago from Atka. So we were in Atka. We are on our way to Chicago, um, which uh, is a former Coast Guard air station. It is no longer operational as a Coast Guard air station or a Loran site. It was originally a Loran site. It is uh, Casco Cove, I believe is the um, what it's called. All right, let's get ourselves leveled out here. Where's my vertical speed? Why am I going the wrong direction? Let's go up. Thank you. Good. Uh, we should we should be able to fly up and punch the clouds here. Let's. Um, See if I can get you turned up to 14,000 because that's where I wanted to fly. I want to get up in there. 14,000, good. Uh, how's our ILS? We are going the wrong direction again. We are indeed. We're going to fly the barber pole. I don't want to fly the barber pole. Thank you. Uh, we want nav to be GPS. Do we have a GPS? Yes, I do. Right there. GPS nav, autopilot on. Nav on, altitude on, oh, so heading. Which one are you going to take control of there, playing? This one? Okay, this one, apparently. Uh, auto throttle, yes, I would like you to take care of the auto throttle as well. Where are you going, playing? Where are you going? Nope, bad plane, bad plane. Nav, please. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. <laughs> Why am I still flying the barber pole? Stop allowing me to fly the barber pole, please. 
Uh, we want you to be a safe, what do we think, 275 maybe? Let's go with 275. That works, 278. Okay, now deal with it. Get me in the proper positioning. Make sure my, okay, we, we should be all set. Flaps say zero. Aircraft is still banking the wrong direction. No, it's banking the right direction. What's going on with you? Why are you silly? All right, we got all kinds of things going on here. No red lights, that's a good sign. We are climbing. We are, we are flying the route, good. All right, I think we're on track and now we can talk about things. <laughs> All right, this is the fourth plane that I have attempted. And the reason was a couple things. First, I tried the C-130. I have a C-130. It's uh, an L model. And everything was fine as I was taxiing and then I decided to prop reverse the aircraft. Because I was like, well, since I'm on the ground, if I put it in prop reverse, I, want, I think I can back the aircraft up and then I don't have to do a 9,000 point turn at the end of the runway, which is by the way, why we're at the end of the runway, because I couldn't find an aircraft that would actually be able to turn around at the end of the runway without like a billion maneuvers. So I was like, you know what? We're, we're not even gonna bother. We're just gonna, we're just going to, uh, we're just gonna start at the end of the runway. So I was like, all right, let me power back the C-130 because that made sense to me. So I put the power back on, I reversed the props and it caused the airplane to flip backwards. It did a backflip on the ground. And I'm like, I'm not even gonna count that. Like, I, I can't even count that because that was the plane model being totally messed up. So I was like, all right, cool. We're not gonna worry about that. Then, I was like, all right, I'll take the B-17 because during World War II, bombers were flying routes out here on the Bering Sea, dealing with Japanese invasion of various Aleutian Islands. So I was like, all right, I got the B-17, loaded up the B-17, turned off my tail lock on my uh, tail bogey, and tried to turn the plane. The tail bogey doesn't actually turn on the, the mod that I have. Like, literally, it does not turn. I couldn't get the aircraft to turn enough to even get it on the runway. And I was like, I'm not even going to deal with that. I mean, I couldn't even... I was like, all right, let me put it on the runway and try to take off with it. I couldn't control it. I couldn't maintain the aircraft on center line because the tail bogey just seemed to do whatever it felt like doing. And so I was like, all right, screw that. So I was like, you know what? My choice is really something single engine jet fighter-ish or something like this. And I thought, well, this would be kind of an interesting aircraft to fly. So here we go. We are aboard our BAE-146. Are we above 10,000? We are above 10,000. Let's uh, flip off those landing lights. Cool. Things are good. We have one hour and 20 minutes according to is the old uh, GPS. So we are flying. I can't get out far enough. We are flying up there, Chicago. Uh, it is it aircraft, it aircraft code. The true aircraft code for Chicago is Papa Alpha Alpha Tango. We are flying Alpha Tango uniform. I think they're the same, but I, if I see what I think is Casca Cove, we're going to deviate and go to Casca Cove. I think um, Alpha Tango Uniform is a small, um, like, gravel strip. Papa Alpha Alpha Tango, the Casca Cove, is going to be a paved strip somewhere. So if we see it on an island really close to Chicago, then we're just going to deviate and go there instead. Doesn't really matter, honestly, as long as we get close, I think. I think. I'm going to toy around, see if I can get um, either the C-130 working or somewhere where I don't need to reverse the plane. It seems to work, other than the fact that it doesn't reverse for nothing. Which I think is, you know, just a problem. Perhaps. <laughs> All right, so let's... Um, let's talk about... 
what we got going on with uh, our Douglas World Round the World Cruiser thing. <laughs> Boy, I can't think, can I? No, I cannot. Uh, ch ch Chicago. Off. I want to get Chicago. Off. Uh, I want that. I'm trying to navigate at the same time. No, I did not want results for Chicago, Google. I promise. No, that's still results for Chicago. That's cute, but no. Uh, what is it? Chicago. Oh, it's O double F, right? Yeah. O. No, it's O G F. Maybe. No. Um. Google likes Chicago. I'm going to tell you that. I was spelling it right. <laughs> no, that's not what I want you to show me, Google. Uh, okay, screw that. <laughs> All right. Uh, what was I going to talk about? Oh. I'm thinking about increasing Flying Friday to weekly because we do have a long ways to go. We haven't even made it out of the United States yet. Now, granted, this is going to be the last point in the United States we touch until we return to Boston, but I'm thinking about doing this weekly. So if you want me to do this weekly, let me know, and I will consider, uh, I will consider doing this weekly. If uh, if you don't think that's a great idea, if you like the bi-weekly thing, then then you can let me know that as well, and we'll uh, we'll make decisions accordingly. Now our next flight is supposed to go from Chicago off to an island I can't even pronounce. We are getting into the. The point at which we're going to get into some areas where I don't even, like, I can't even pretend, I can't even pretend to um, pronounce where we're going. Just, just so you know. Uh, I'm still, by the way, trying to find the route. Because maybe if I can find the freaking route, I can tell you about Chicago. It's just insane. Da -da -da. And that's really good. Good, good, good job, Google. You fail. You fail Googling 101, Google. Actually, what what failed was the, Sm the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum. Uh, that's what I get for trusting the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, apparently. All right. Um, see, the site that I usually use... Um, the site that I usually use... I. I can't get to on my on the uh, the thing I'm using right now. I can only get to it on my my lap or my desktop, which is what we are currently using. So I'm like, ah, uh, booger. Maybe it'll be there. On. We have to know. We, we know it landed somewhere in Chicago. I know this because I found it on that other website. But. Alright. 
Why can't I see that website? <laughs> These are the uh, slings and arrows of Outrageous Fortune upon which we are spending our time. Okay, screw it. I'm not going to tell you about Chicago Off because I can't find any information on Chicago Off because Google's being a butt tonight. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so we do have one hour and 12 minutes. We are not going to do this at the speed. Let's get the menu bar up. Let's get the speed up to four times. Yay. But we'll talk about other things. Ooh, let's not mess with that. Oh, don't don't mess with that there. Then when you take the autopilot off, you're going to cause all kinds of problems. Like our beautiful aircraft. Oh. Now, part of the reason I chose this one. And so you guys kind of understand what I'm doing. I'm not doing most of these flights blind. No, 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 no. I'm basically flying the route twice. I fly it once with what I basically amount to the, the recon vehicle. I use an aircraft that's fast, reliable for me to fly. <laughs> Something that I'm used to flying that I feel comfortable flying. And I do that to ascertain the situation at the landing point. Now, the downside is I flew to Chicago. I flew the ACA to Chicago route before I got sick after going to Europe last month. And with the idea that when I got back from Europe, I'd still remember everything and we'd be, we'd be kosher and cool and all that. Well, the problem is I, I, I forgot it all. So we're basically gonna fly this route blind. I never fly the route with the aircraft I intend to actually fly on that route. So usually what I'm flying with is something I've already used once on this route um, or something that has no virtual cockpit, but I just want to fly it. Usually what I do is after I do a mod spotlight, I rip out any plane that doesn't have a virtual cockpit. I'm just, it's just not going to fly with me, pun intended. But if it's a neat plane that I think might be just, you know, a neat plane to fly around with, then I'll use it here in the Douglas World Cruiser as my recon aircraft. If I crashed a recon aircraft, I crashed a recon aircraft. I don't care. I usually fly under perfect weather conditions, unlike right now, because we are still using that weather program I've been using, and we have some uh, we have some cloudy conditions here with our PAE 146. She's a she is a nice looking aircraft. I do like the lines of the 146. When I'm when I'm sitting at uh, I don't see them a lot at Frankfurt, but when I'm sitting at uh, Heathrow or De Gaulle or um, Brussels Airport that I can't remember what it's truly called. I mean, I know it's call letters are BRU. Uh, but when I'm sitting there and I see the, the 146s taxiing, I, the, something about them, they just, they make me smile. Like little four engine aircraft like this, they just make me smile. It's one of the few aircraft I have not flown on that's in regular scheduled service. I hope to fly in one soon, honestly. I, I really want to fly on a 146. I don't want them to retire the 146 before I get a chance to fly. They won't. Usually I hear that retirements are planned well in advance of the aircraft actually being retired. Uh, for instance, I flew on an uh, MD-11. Uh three years ago, I think. Yeah, three years ago. I flew on an MD-11 because I heard that KLM was going to retire it in the near future from a, a friend of mine. And as soon as he said they were going to retire it in the near future, I found the first MD-11 flight that worked in my schedule and took it. Just so I could check that plane off the list of planes that I'd flown on. And I didn't care when they retired it. They didn't retire it until uh, October of this year, October 2014. I think it was, in fact, I think it was October 14th was the last flight, I think. Something like that. I don't remember. Um, but it was relatively recent in the grand scheme of things. So I had already flown the aircraft. And so when they were like, oh, this is the last flight, I was like, meh, I've already flown. I mean, it'd be cool to be on the last flight and all, but I was just like, yeah, not worth it. Still, I need to fly 146. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's 
That's a pretty shot right there. Very nice. As we trucking along. Now, we are 54 minutes out of ATU. Still unsure about the um, whether Casca Cove is, a, it's not ATU, it's not Alpha Tango Uniform. It is Papa Alpha Alpha Tango, so it's got to be somewhere close by. We'll just watch for it and dive through the clouds or something. We're still a ways out. Still. Look at that beautiful fly bee. I would prefer, I think the best way to fly a 146, by the way, is out of London City Airport because they're supposed to be you have to be relatively aggressive in and out of that airport because of the noise restrictions and the big buildings. So I'd love to fly in and out of London City on a 146. I think that would be awesome. It's one of those things, you know, aviation geeks. We all have have those things on our, our list. <laughs> uh, kind of like flying in, A3, in an A380, a 787, and an A350. Those are on my list as well. All right. We are 49, 48 minutes out. Everything looks hunky-dory on board this aircraft. This is probably going to be an easy, easy flight. That's good. I like easy, easy flights. This isn't the most beautiful interior. Now, I have seen the payware version of the 146. I haven't flown in it, but I've seen videos of it. Oh, it's gorgeous, but I'm not going to spend the money for the payware stuff. When I can find quality free aircraft, I don't see any reason to pay for them. I mean, yes, if I want a B-17, I need to get A-2A's B-17. When it comes down to it, they have the best B-17 out there. I think it's A-2A. It's gotta be A-2A. But when I want something that's just in my hangar, because I'm weird and I like to collect things, the sun just changed colors, but whatever. I'm weird. I like to collect aircraft. I like to have entire sets of airplanes for reasons that I don't understand myself. There's no way I could do that and on payware stuff. I couldn't afford it. Also, there isn't payware on everything I want, so that's the other problem. All right, so let's hit. I'll pull this over here. There we go. Uh, nearest. Our nearest is Papa Alpha. Okay, there's Papa Alpha Sierra Yankee. That's an ILS 10,000 foot runway. Where is that? 196. So we're closing on Papa Alpha Sierra Yankee. Well. Who are you then? Papa Alpha Delta Tango is ATCA. All right, who are you? Uh, uh, that, at Chemia, Alaska, okay. No, you're not who I want. There's gotta be somebody in here. Well, there are a hundred, wait a minute. Where'd that nearest go? They are 180 nautical miles ahead of us. So they're 30 nautical miles shy of our destination. I wonder if Alpha Tango Uniform is just how um, Flight Simulator X is calling it. Huh. I don't know. All right, so we're 30 minutes out. I think we're going to wait until we get about to 20 minutes, and then we'll start dealing with descent and approach, give or take. In the meantime... Let's talk about something else. I tweeted about it while I was in Europe, because that's where I first learned about it when I was reading, I don't know where it is, but my PC Pilot magazine, I picked up in Europe because they're published in the UK and they're almost impossible to find decently here in the US. I was able to pick one up in uh, Luxembourg City. But Dovetail Games bought the license for Flight Simulator from Microsoft. Who's Dovetail Games? 
They make train simulator. Not trains, but train simulator, like train simulator 2015. I'm not sure what I feel about this. On one hand, it's somebody developing it, which is better than Microsoft, who's just sitting there going, eh. but train simulator. Look at the DLC world. Oh my gosh. Like I can't find much in the way of free engines. In fact, I can't find any free engines for train simulator. None. Everything is bought. Now, that's great for the A2As and and all the other payware product producers for flight simulator, but it does concern me. I'm all about making our hobby, let's just call it what it is, our hobby as gamers and simulation gamers, I'm all about making it as inexpensive as possible. Because if we have to spend a fortune to buy mods, we're not going to have as much money as we want to do other things. So I'm kind of worried, but at the same time I'm kind of happy because Dovetail seems to have their head on straight. The interview they gave to PC Pilot seemed to indicate they have their their head screwed on straight and they know what they're doing or if they don't know what they're doing they if they don't know what they're doing they know that they don't know <laughs> if that makes sense and are willing to ask and hire the people they need to me that's important but we'll see we'll see what they do kind of i'm kind of watching i hope they they evolve the product and put out a new one because I'll tell you right now, there are two products out there that are going to beat up Flight Simulator X. Flight Simulator X isn't evolved into whatever comes after that. Flight Simulator X1, I guess. That's the Aerosoft product. Aerosoft Flight Simulator. I think it's Aerosoft. Um, it's the one that Dan NerdCubes did a uh, video on and almost killed himself. Um, do, doing the glider wing flappy bit. And X-Plane. I don't. I have X-Plane. I don't really like X-Plane, but it will kick Microsoft's butt or Flight Simulator X's butt in many areas. Still, I hope. I have hopes. I have hopes that Dovetail will, will continue the line and let let mod authors continue building cool freeware mods for for Flight Simulator. All right, we are now. 24 minutes out, 127 nautical miles from our destination. I'm thinking we might start a descent here in a little bit. And I think, let's flip on our landing lights just to be sure. What's this? Taxi lights. I don't need those. All right. So let's, um, now let's turn the speed down. Let's start with that. Turn off the menu bar because I hate the menu bar. All right, let's let's uh, let's go ahead and descend. Ooh, that's a bit more than I wanted. Let's go with, oh, let's go with 6,000. All right, so we're gonna start our descent. Oh, that is beautiful right there. I mean, you have to admit, whether you're an aviation nerd or not, that's a pretty look. Sun, clouds, awesome airplane. I mean, it's not like an SR-71 kind of awesome, but it's still awesome airplane. Where'd you go, sun? Oh, sun is now behind something. Yeah, that's okay. Whoa, we got a little bit of, got a little bit of kick. A big clip, kick. I, I was like, oh, I got to click a couple times because we got to get through the air traffic control tower. We're too far away from a control tower for it to register. Oopsie. All right, I think we can go ahead and uh, speed this thing back up. I was like, let's slow it down. No, let's speed it back up. I do hate when you when you do course corrections and stuff. Um, and the plane jerks, and it jerks so much it moves your mouse. And yeah, first world problems. I realize. Oh, the sun's behind the upper cloud layer. Duh. 
I was going to fly this. I heard that there was a big storm rolling through the uh, Aleutian chain. And I was like, oh, I need to fly the route. But I got busy doing other things. And I was like, oh, I missed the chance to fly through a nasty storm. And then I thought about it. I'm like, well, you know what? With my particular penchant for crashing aircraft, it's probably better I didn't. Now, <clears throat> come landing time, we need to, well, we're going to plan our next flight already. That is going to be from Chicago off to Komodorsky, I think is how you're going to say it, Komodorsky Island, which is uh, uh, airport code uniform hotel, Papa X-Ray. It is 332 more miles that we have to fly. And I actually already know what plane I'm going to take for that one. And I'm actually going to do that one blind. It's one of the few I'm going to do blind. Because it's such a short flight and the plane I'm choosing is going to be forgiving, I hope. Now that I said that, I'm kind of questioning whether that's an intelligent thing to do, but whatever. Um, Alright, so... Let's... Enter. Yep, okay. So... Alpha Tango Uniform is Casca Cove, Coast Guard Station, at Atu, Alaska, which is the same as Papa Alpha Alpha Tango, Chicago. That's why I was having problems finding on the Google searches I needed to search for Atu, Alaska. Oh my gosh. That is one of the drawbacks of, um, of flying this Douglas World Cruiser route, is there are some times where I'm just like, where is the thing I need? And... It's because the names change over time. Um, I already know that I'm going to have a few issues coming up um, as we approach these Russian islands because, well, they've changed hands a few times. Right, let's go to normal speed. We're 65 nautical miles out. Uh, we are at 6,000 feet, so we're going to go ahead. Um, let's go ahead and descend. There is a mountain here. I know that much. But we're going to go ahead and descend to 3,500. I kind of want to punch through the cloud layer if I can, because I don't like going in with uh, without a visual early on, but we might have to just kind of make do. We are in an icing situation, but we have our anti-ice equipment on. We've had it on the whole time, which is probably not the smartest thing, but that's alright. Now, what we might do is um, it's something that's covered, I think, in one of the training missions for Flight Sim. It's been so long since I've done a training mission. I think it's the mountain flying mission, and if not, it's definitely on the Apple delivery mission, the Washington State Apple delivery mission, which I think comes with the accelerated pack, where they tell you overfly the runway to check for obstructions, which is logical to do when you're doing bush flying. Well, we might end up treating this like more bush flying as we go along, just because it looks like we're we're breaking through, but it, the haze is such that I can't even really tell. That's awesome. It is hazy. Hazy. Yeah, wow. It is it ever hazy. Is that water down there, do you think? I don't think that's water down there. <laughs> Another pretty picture. Oh, look at the pretty plane. Oh, the pretty plane. Okay, yeah, it's just the haziest. Oh my goodness, is that terrible weather. It's terrible weather we're having here. Well, let's make sure the, um, let's see, what's this? Nope, that's the ice. What are you? Tell me. Tell me what you is. No? Okay, fine. What are you? That's battery switch. We don't want to mess with that. Ah, nope. There we go. We're just going to tell our passengers they need to sit their butts back down. <laughs> that means all of you, sit down. Except for if you're walking and watching this on a mobile device. At which point, watch out! <laughs> uh, I did see somebody walk into a lamp pole while they were looking at their phone the other day. 
I had to try really hard not to bust out laughing at them. And, you know, usually you'd be concerned. I mean, they, I mean, it was like clang, kind of like they whacked themselves. And it's like, oh, that's going to hurt. And then you're like, oh, they might be bleeding. And then I thought about it. Uh, it's like, I think it was 16 degrees Fahrenheit out. And I was like, no, they're not going to bleed. It'll just freeze. They're fine. I just walked on, trying my best not to laugh. I'm a bad person. I know I'm a bad person, but it <laughs> was funny. Just a warning. Don't, don't walk and watch your phone. Actually walk and pay attention. Unless you're like a bat and you have echolocation, in which case, wow, you're lucky. <laughs> Is there an airport out there? According to their thing, they're, according to our thing, there's an island out there with an airport on it. Don't know where, but somewhere there's an island with an airport on it. And they can't see us either. So I guess it's all fine and good. All right. Ten minutes, they say. All right, let's uh, let's speed this let's speed this bar uh, with the bar. Yeah, let's speed the bar up. Chugga chugga choo choo goes the train train plane. Well, could be a train. Oh, as long as they don't integrate trains and planes like rail uh, trains did, where you can fly a plane. That's such a stupid piece of that simulator. Made me want to punch a panda. Not really, because the panda would beat me up, but that's not the point. Hey, did you know I'm drinking coffee while doing this flight? I literally have a cup of coffee sitting on my desk while I'm doing this. Can you tell? I hope you can. <laughs> I hope you can or can't. I'm not sure which. Hey, we probably should have gone there because they have an ILS slope. I could have actually toggled into the ILS slope. <sighs> Sad day. You didn't know that, by the way, because I had it on the other screen. But there, see, ILS slope. Ah. Oh, bye, ILS slope. I don't think these guys do. I'm thinking I need to sort of turn off and go to about... Oh, what do you think? Like, 290? So let's, uh, let's adjust this to 290 really quick. That's not 290, that's 250. Okay, now I want you to go to heading. Kind of get us lined up. Cool beans. I'm going to put that back over there. We'll continue using it as our guide. We are 14 nautical miles in. I need to slow this whole thing down. Hold it, hold it, slow. Get rid of the menu bar. Okay, I, I see land. I see land. Okay, I got. I've got visual on land. All right, we are going to descend from 3,500. I think we're going to go for. Let's go for 2,000. Let's also slow the aircraft down. Let's aim for. That's fine. 243. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right, so that's the little spit at the edge. So then we have another piece of land. Ah, there it is. There it is. I see it coming out of the... Okay. So see how it's a little bit of a mountain there? Okay, it wasn't nearly as much of a mountain as I thought it might have been, but whatever. Okay, so we're 10 nautical miles from target. All right, I think I need to just shut off the autopilot here. Kill that, kill that, kill that, 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 and that. Turn the engine all the way down. Let's just keep cruising here. All right, so we are now... Well, we were, <laughs> we went lower than we thought. I forgot to adjust the barometric pressure, but that's okay. All right, I need to slow this aircraft down. Why are you still going? 
that fast. Okay, now we're finally bleeding speed. Good play. Okay, I want to bleed a lot of speed here because I need to deploy. All oh, wow. That's actually taller than me now. I do need to pay attention to that. Okay. This plane is very, um, very quick to accelerate. So we need to we need to watch all of our gauges simultaneously while looking out the window. Nothing could possibly go wrong with that scenario. Once we uh, get around here, I think we need to fly right up this cut here. This ought to be fun. Let's go for it. Yes, we do. Okay. I remember, I'm starting to remember things from my, uh, our prior flight. Right, let's get some f flaps back in, because that was a bad idea. I'm going way too fast. Okay, somewhere out here there's a runway. We've got to clear this land in front of us first, okay. We can do that. Okay, I need you to continue bleeding speed, please, plane. Okay. No? Still not... Still too fast. Sorry. Okay, there's our airport right there. <laughs> Alright, so 170 is too fast. On. I want you to fly. I also want you to bleed off your speed, aircraft. Are you willing to let me have 5% now? No? Good lord. Alright. Let's, uh... Breaks out. Breaks in. Now you should. I'm at below 150. Shut up, plane. Breaks out. We're going in. Okay. Going in. We got our gears out. Okay, let's, let's make sure we have some speed here. Where's the runway? We are completely off track for this runway. Now we want to go down. Okay, where, let's watch that vertical speed. I'm aiming for about... Well, I don't know what I'm aiming for anymore. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. I'm just going to be really careful here. Kind of want to... Oh, wow. Um, something's telling me this isn't going to work very well, but let's... Brakes! Stopping everything. Oh, wow. If we screw up, we're going to end up in the water. Uh, okay, we might be okay. Uh, we're not going to be okay. Yes, we are. We are going to be fine. We're going to be fine. Come on, plane. Stop. Stop, you stupid plane. We're going to crash into the fence. Son of a gun. Oh, he just ran over the fence. That's water. Crap. Diff brakes. Wow. Now the plane just doesn't want to stop. Now it's just screwing with me. What? Where's the thrust reversers? I'm literally slamming on the thrust reversers, by the way. The plane just doesn't want to do anything. Well, we got lucky. The plane is still going 22. I'm on the brakes. There. We've landed. <laughs> Badly, mind you. Badly. Okay. So we've stopped. Now will the... No, we haven't stopped. The aircraft is still... Why are you still accelerating? I have the engine that's off. 
Like, no wonder it wouldn't stop. No wonder that the air, the plane just, oh, it has a bias to go. Well, there you go. Huh. Okay, I don't like this airplane nearly as much as I used to, but um, in theory, we landed here. Ah, <laughs> uh, we did so very badly. But hey, we're still alive. We didn't end up in that water. I should have gone around and come back in from this direction. That would have been smart, but hey, you know. You should be used to it by now. All right, we're in. We are on Atu Island. Uh, we made it. Well, yeah. Well, you guys can debate the landing later. <laughs> you can debate the landing in the comments. In the meantime, I'm going to call it a landing. I'm also going to put the parking brake on so the plane doesn't fly off again. <sighs> Until next time. It'll be two. It'll be not next week, but the week after. But remember, if you want to see this happening weekly next year, let me know. There are some other things I talked about. I don't remember them all because my brain is all muddled with coffee. All right. Until then, happy flying, everybody. Don't land like I do because it's a really bad idea.